I'm here in the meatpacking district of New York City and standing next to what just rolled off of the truck, a beautiful Hyundai Ioniq 5. Now here in the US, we haven't had a chance to see many of these yet. The vehicle's already on sale in some parts of Europe and in South Korea, but here in the US, there's only two of these in the entire country and they haven't been here that long. So we're getting an early peek at this. Coming up, we're gonna have Michelle Tinson of Hyundai talk a little bit about some of the Ionic 5 features. We're gonna do a walk around, check out the interior, talk about the unique features the Ionic 5 has. Now this is one of the most exciting new electric vehicle launches for 2021. So you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned and see what we have to say about it. But first, don't forget, please click that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. So we're here with Michelle Tinson from Hyundai. Michelle's gonna give us an overview of the Ionic 5 before I do a more extensive walk around uh, and explain some of the details and features. So Michelle, what do we got here? Thank you, Tom, appreciate it. So we have the Ionic 5, which is Hyundai's first CUV electric vehicle that's built on our new dedicated platform. And that platform is the EGMP, which is the electric global modular platform. Uh, the vehicle, will be arriving in dealerships later this year, the end of the year. And as you can tell, the exterior design ties in with our original 45 EV concept car from a few years back. So you'll notice a lot of the similar um, design features. You'll notice inside we have quite a significant amount of standard features, both in safety and uh, technology. On the safety front, I think one of the most um, exciting pieces that we have, and it's a first for Hyundai, is the Highway Drive Assist 2. And that feature is basically a more sophisticated um, Highway Drive Assist um, initiative with sensors and radar. But I would encourage you to check out all of the um, interesting features on both the rear of the vehicle with the lighting, the LED lighting, the pixels, and as well as some of the interior, which is very eco-friendly. And it's got a really cool interior. The center console slides Correct. back and forth. The dashboard is really cool. It's, it's minimalistic, but it also has some nice details to it. And as, of course, you mentioned, the exterior has this really cool retro look. And uh, we're going we're, we're gonna to talk a little bit about that coming up next. Thanks for your Thanks, time, Thanks, Tom. Michelle. Appreciate it. One thing you immediately notice when you approach the Ionic 5 is it's much bigger than it looks in pictures. Now, the scale and proportion of this vehicle just doesn't translate well when you look at it in pictures. It's actually a pretty big crossover. It's longer than a Volkswagen ID4, and it has more interior passenger volume than either the ID4 or the Mustang Mach E two electric crossovers in this class. You wouldn't think that was the case from the picture. It kind of looks like a Volkswagen Golf when you look at the side profile, but it is more than a foot longer than a Volkswagen Golf. This is actually a really nice size crossover that'll suit the needs of many families that need to haul around the kids. The Ionic 5's fresh, but retro look is really apparent up front with all of these sharp angles uh, and clamshell hood. I love these uh, headlight design here with the uh, parametric pixel design that Hyundai calls it. Really cool. Also this V-shaped front bumper. As you can see as it angles down, it might be a small design feature, but I think it really gives the front end some prominence. Now there's no traditional grille. However, in addition to this lower open area, there is active air intake here in this long opening here that's only about three quarters of an inch wide. The modern but retro look continues on the rear of the Ionic 5. Um, it also has this triangular design here like we saw up front in the bumper. And the parametric pixel theme can also be seen in the rear with all of these tiny little LED lights. You also get this LED light strip that goes from one side of the vehicle to the other. I also notice that there's no rear window wiper on the Ionic 5. That's been eliminated, so hopefully that won't be a problem for
for Ionic 5 owners. Ionic 5 has 27.2 cubic feet of cargo space behind the second row seating, which increases up to 59.3 cubic feet when the second row seats are folded. The 60-40 split rear row seats can slide forward up to 5.3 inches and offer a greater angle of recline. If you lift up the hinged cargo floor, you'll find a small lower compartment that holds the tire mobility kit as well as the 120 volt portable charging cord. It appears as though the Ionic 5 will not come standard with a proper level 2 portable charger as many other new EVs do. This will mean that most Ionic 5 owners will probably elect to purchase a high powered level 2 EVSE for home charging. The Ionic 5's charge port is located on the rear right side of the vehicle and automatically opens when you push the flap. It also closes by itself by pressing a button. You can also open and close the charge port by depressing and holding down a button on the key fob. By far one of the coolest features of the Ionic 5 is its ability to offload power. Using the provided J1772 adapter, you can plug an extension cord into it and power things like laptops, camping equipment, lights, power tools, and other small appliances. The N5 has a sharp edge design element that extends from the A-pillar to the front of the hood, and it gives the appearance of being where the hood ends. However, that's not the case. The vehicle actually has a clamshell style hood that when open, you can see extends all the way to the top of the wheel arches. There is a frunk up there under the hood, but don't get too excited. It only holds 0.8 cubic feet of cargo. I wonder why it was necessary to have that high rear shelf towards the back of the frunk. So I popped open the plastic compartment and I could see the power electronics that are located right on top of the front traction motor. The door handles on the Ionic 5 are flush, but automatically present when you approach the vehicle with the key in your possession. There's a minimalistic theme to the interior, but definitely not to the degree of that, say, a Tesla vehicles go. There's plenty of plastic panels, but most of which have some degree of padding. Both front seats fully recline and have leg rests that extend outward. The Ionic 5 has two 12.3 inch display screens that are located side by side, one for the driver's display, and the other is a touch screen for the infotainment system. There is a physical on off button and climate controls are touch sensitive. However, just above climate controls, there is a strip of physical buttons that controls the navigation system and media. Regenerative braking paddles on the steering wheel are standard equipment as they are on the Kona EV and Ionic Electric. Another super unique feature for the Ionic 5 is it has a magnetic board to the left of the driver's display where you could place magnets and hold notes and pictures like you would on a refrigerator. The drive mode selector is on the steering wheel and it allows you to toggle between sport, eco, and normal drive modes. Take a look at the range estimator on the top right hand corner of the driver's display and you can see that the estimated range changes as I switch between the three different drive modes. The panoramic glass roof has an automatic closing sunscreen that uniquely closes in two pieces from the front and rear of the vehicle. The center console has a wireless charging pad and two USB power ports. Up front, there's a USB power port and a 12 volt power outlet. There are two additional USB ports for rear seating passengers. And if you get the limited trim, which is the top of the line, you get a 16 amp power outlet below the rear seats. And I hope what may be the best news for last, and that's charging the Ionic 5. Hyundai is offering Ionic 5 purchasers and leasees two years of unlimited 30-minute DC fast charging sessions on the Electrify America charging network. You may ask, well, why are they only giving 30-minute free charging sessions? Why not just unlimited for as long as you need? Well, that's because the Ionic 5 charges so quickly, you don't need more than 30 minutes. In fact, on a 350 kilowatt Electrify America charging station, you can charge an Ionic 5 from 10% to over 90% in 30 minutes. And if you don't feel like hanging out for 30 minutes, 
The Ionic 5 will charge from 10 to 80% in 18 minutes, making it the fastest charging electric vehicle today from 10% to 80%. The Ionic 5 will come with a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack and two motor layouts, either rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. The top of the line dual motor setup is an all wheel drive system that produces a combined power output of 320 horsepower and 446 pound feet of torque. And that can propel the Ionic 5 from zero to 60 miles an hour in less than five seconds. The single motor rear wheel drive layout offers 225 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. When equipped with the single motor two wheel drive Ionic 5, the driving range is an estimated 300 miles. That's the longest range Ionic 5 that will be offered. Now the targeted driving range for the dual motor all wheel drive in SE and SEL trim is 269 miles per charge. And the top of the line limited all wheel drive model has a targeted range of 244 miles. I say targeted on all of these estimates because Hyundai has not announced the official EPA range ratings for the Ionic 5. All configurations have a top speed of 115 miles an hour and can tow a trailer with a capacity of up to 1500 pounds. So that's it for our Ionic 5 first look. I hope we answered some of the questions that you had about this vehicle. I'm really excited about the Ionic 5, looking forward to its launch in the fall of this year. And I really can't wait to get behind the wheel of one to see how it drives. Now, obviously I didn't get a chance to do that now. Hyundai only has two of these in the entire country. So they certainly aren't gonna allow media drives just yet. Hyundai hasn't announced pricing yet for the US market, but estimates peg it at somewhere around $45,000 as the starting MSRP. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget if you like what we're doing here on State of Charge, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle and electric vehicle charging news. Thanks for watching.